Welcome back class. Today we're starting properties of matter. Let's take a look at this picture. An ice lolly melting in the hot, hot sun. Wow, it is hot outside. What do you think of when you see the fruit bars melting in the sun? Write a question. So you might ask, why is it melting? Or how? What other questions might you have? Will it still taste the same? Will the color change? Let's look at some of the key vocabulary we're going to be going through in this chapter. Float, mass, pattern, solid, gas, materials, property, volume, liquid, matter, and sink. Chloe wants to be a carpenter. A carpenter cuts and shapes materials to build new things. It is important that carpenters use the correct materials to build all sorts of objects. Chloe wants to take frozen fruit bars to school, but she doesn't want them to melt. Can you help? Draw what you would use to keep the bars from melting. So remember, she can cut and shape materials. So materials can be wood or stone or metal. So what materials can you think of that she can use to create something so that the frozen fruit bars don't melt? Use the flashcards to learn the vocabulary definitions for this lesson. Matter, anything that takes up space and has mass. Property, the look, feel, smell, sound, or taste of a thing. Mass, the amount of matter in an object. Solid, a state of matter that has a shape of its own. Liquid state of matter that takes the shapes of the container it is in. Gas, state of matter that does not have its own shape. <clears throat> now let's take a look at this question here. What is matter? So we went over it briefly. Matter is anything that takes up space. So circle things that are matter. So anything really that takes up any type of space is matter. So we have ice, cloth, mouse, air in a balloon, paper clip, train, milk, sponge, grain of sand, wood, water, and butter. Which ones do you think are matter? The correct answer is that they're all matter. It can be liquid, it can be gas, it can be solids. But if it takes up space, then it is matter. So actually, everything is matter. We watched the video of the hot air balloons flying high in the sky. So think about questions you might have about how or why these hot air balloons are able to fly in the sky. Are the balloons made of matter? We would say yes, because they take up space. Even the air inside is matter, and the material of the balloon itself is matter. Everything is matter. Here's a fun activity. What types of objects can you find around your classroom or in your house? You might find a glass of water, a pencil, a cup, papers. Make a prediction. Which type of matter will you find the most of? So will you find lots of liquids or solids or gases? Look around your classroom or home for different types of matter. Find eight items and then use the table below to record your data. I can help you with a couple. 
solid, we might find some pencils, some paper, maybe an eraser. What else could you find? Let's say a desk or chair and then liquids. You might find a mug of coffee. So there might be coffee, there might be a bottle of water. So inside the water is the liquid. Um, and maybe there's a carton of juice, so you can see the juice. And gas, you won't be able to see the gas with your own eyes, but gas is everywhere. So it's in the air, it's oxygen that you breathe. And if there's a, a cup of hot, hot tea or hot coffee, then you could see the steam from the tea. So in the table, which type of matter has the most examples? And circle it. In my example here, we have most solids. I put down most of these than I did of liquid and then of gas. Let's watch this video and we'll be able to answer some of the questions we have. Matter is all around us. Matter. Matter is anything that takes up space. Matter can be living or non-living. Everything around us is made of matter. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Some matter is solid, like a person, a dog, and a bucket. Some matter is liquid, like water, juice, and milk. Some matter is gas, like the air in bubbles, the smell of a flower or good food, and the air inside a balloon. This boy uses different kinds of matter as he washes his dog. So what type of matter can we see here? He might be using a bar of soap, which is solid, and then he's creating, he's using water, which is liquid, and they're creating bubbles, which are filled with air, so that's gas. So we have solid, liquid, and gas. Three types of matter. There are three kinds of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. So here are three examples of solids, a boy, shoes, a dog. Liquid, you have water, juice, milk, and gases. You have the air inside bubbles, clouds, and rays from the sun. Matter can be described. We use our senses to describe the physical properties of matter. A property is how something looks, feels, smells, tastes, or sounds. We can tell about something's size, shape, and color. We can describe how something feels like a soft kitten or sounds like a bird singing. We can describe something's smell and taste, such as a pizza. We use our senses to describe the matter around us. Bubbles can be described as round and clear. Honey can be described as a thick liquid. So property is how something looks, feels, smells, tastes, or sounds. So basically, property is when you describe matter, when you describe anything. Solids. Matter can be classified or grouped as a solid, a liquid, or a gas based on its properties. A solid is a kind of matter that has a shape of its own. Solids can be hard, such as a rock. They can be soft, such as fur. They can be small, like a grain of sand, or big, like a mountain. They can be squishy, stretchy, or bouncy. Solids keep their form no matter where they are. For example, a desk has the same shape in a large room or a small room. Many solids are hard, such as walls, desks, and chairs. So a solid is a type of matter that has its own shape. Some solids can stretch, squish, or bounce. Liquids. A liquid is a kind of matter that takes the shape of the container it is in. A liquid does not have its own shape. It can flow or pour. Liquids flow from a higher place to a lower place. When water is poured in a cup, it will fill up the bottom of the cup first and then fill the rest. You can measure the volume of a liquid. 
Volume is the amount of space something takes up. Some liquids flow faster than others do. If juice is spilled on the floor, the liquid spreads quickly, taking on the shape of the floor. Syrup and glue move more slowly when poured. Water is liquid. Glue flows slowly. So liquid, unlike a solid, solid has a fixed shape no matter where it is. It has the same shape. Liquid is a type of matter that takes the shape of its container. So if its container is a glass in, in a cylinder shape, the liquid will be in that shape. If it comes out, if it's in a tube, the liquid will be in the form of a tube, the shape of a tube. Gases. A gas is a kind of matter that does not have a shape of its own. The air around us is a gas. We cannot see or taste most gases, but we can hear and feel them moving as you hear and feel the wind. Gas pumped into a balloon takes the shape of the balloon. So gas is a matter that does not have a shape. Gas is spread out in all directions to fill any size container. When there is no container, gases keep spreading. When water boils, it changes into a gas called water vapor. You can't see water vapor. Balloons can float because they are filled with a gas called helium. Gases take up space like the bubbles in this drink. Gas is let out when a soda can is opened. Water changes into a gas when it is boiled. Now let's try some of these questions. We use our senses to describe the... So do you remember which word talks about the description of matter? It was property. Property talks about whether it's hard or soft or large or small, what it smells like, what color it is. Matter is anything that takes up space. And in the table below, draw an example of each type of matter. So what are the types of matter? We have solids, liquids, and gases. So draw an example of a solid, of a liquid, and of a gas. Hello class, let's continue to page eight. Inquiry activity. You will sort items from your scavenger hunt, so just look around your house or the classroom and look for some items that you see. And we're gonna sort them according to their properties. So remember, property is the description of something, the description of your matter. So it can be the smell, the color, the, the hardness or softness of it. So which property will have the most items? So which description? I put, I think most of my items will be sorted by color. So I think the property that will have the most items is color. And now we're gonna use this table to record the properties and the names of the items. And then we can circle the items that belong in more than one group. So smell, what are some things that will have smell? Sometimes um, pencils have smell, right? They have that woody smell. Maybe there's a cup of coffee around, so you can say coffee. Um, if there's a sandwich. And, and so on. Whatever things you find that have the property of smell, you write down. Taste. Um, also, the same thing we would find here, we'd have the coffee, because coffee has that strong taste, and the sandwich would have a taste. The pencil probably wouldn't have taste. You wouldn't be able to taste it anyway. Um, and think of anything else from your scavenger hunt or from around the room that has taste. And then color. Almost everything has color, right? You could say color pencils, um, crayons, markers. markers, maybe a pencil case, and so on. And then if it's hard or soft, so the pencil would be hard or soft. We could, we could describe a pencil as being hard or soft, also the crayons, etc. So we wouldn't be able to describe 
say um, the air as hard or soft because you wouldn't be able to feel it. So we're not going to put air. So those are some of the things that we can put down. And now use the information from your table here on page eight to create a bar graph. Show how many items of each property you sorted. So here you're going to put the property again. So you're going to put smell, taste, color, hard or soft. So smell or whatever other properties you put, taste, etc. And then you're going to say how many you found. So here we found one, two, three. So we're going to color three, three uh, squares upwards. And for taste, how many did we find? Two. So we'll only color two squares and so on. What pattern do you see in the way you sorted or classified material? So matter is whether it is solid, liquid, or gas, right? So what pattern do you see? Do you see more solids or liquids or gases? We actually don't have any gases in my examples. We have one example of liquid, um, the coffee, but the rest are solid. So I would say for this, for my answer, um, the most matter, the most matter I collected or I found was solid and there were no liquids and there were no gases. So now we're going to read what is matter about the properties of matter and answer the questions after we've read it. What is matter? Properties of matter. Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. Look around you. The chair you are sitting in is matter. The water you drink is matter. Even the air we breathe is matter. We use matter all the time. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. A boulder has more mass than a pebble. Use a balance to measure and compare the mass of objects. The balls are the same shape and size. A croquet ball has more mass than a tennis ball. The objects are both bread, but the loaf of bread has more matter than the slice of bread. That's because there's just more. If there's more, then it has more mass and it's heavier. To describe matter, we use its properties. The property of matter are the look, feel, smell, sound, or taste. Matter can have color. It can be different sizes and shapes. It can be hard, soft, or bendable. It can be thick or it can be thin. Matter can be living or non-living, as in the first page when we saw a mouse or when we saw a train. The fruit is orange, sweet, soft, and sweet. The ribbons on the ballet slippers are thin, shiny, and bendable. Look at the two bears. They have similar properties. They are brown, they are soft, they are small. They have different properties. One is living and one is non-living. So now let's go back and try to answer some of the questions. Look at the picture of the balance, the pan balance with a croquet ball and the tennis ball. So a croquet ball is, is a bigger, heavier, uh, not bigger, but it's a heavier ball and it's dense. It's full of mass. So how can you tell that the croquet ball has more mass than the tennis ball? We can tell that this has more mass than this because the scale is, is falling or it's at the bottom. It's lower with a croquet ball than it is with a tennis ball. And now match each description of the orange with the correct property. So orange, as in the color, talks about the look, right? So we, we match orange to look. Does soft describe the feel or the taste? The feel, right? It feels soft. So we, we match these two together. And sweet is describing the taste. You will learn how to compare the masses of two objects. Remember, mass is the amount of matter in an object. Read the steps of the investigation and think about the objects you have chosen. Which object do you think will have more mass? So find any two things in a classroom or around you. 
For example, if you see a water bottle and a pencil, which one do you think will have more mass? It means which one will be heavier? Look around the classroom for two objects you can measure with a balance, and then choose two objects you think will have different masses. Measure each object's mass with the gram cubes, and use a separate piece of paper. How do the masses of your objects compare? So if you imagine, if we used a scale like this one, and we put the water bottle here and the pencil here, how would it sit? probably sit like this. The water bottle would bring this part of the scale down and the pencil would rise up because the pencil is lighter or has less mass than the water bottle. List the two objects on the table. Below each object, list the observable properties. These are the properties you can see. Circle any properties that are shared by both objects. So the object, here you would write water bottle in this example. And here you'd write pencil. So anything you can see, this might be shiny. This would be dull, so not shiny. This might be a blue water bottle. This might be a yellow color pencil. Um, this would be hard. You wouldn't be able to bend it, and the pencil would also be hard. So now circle the same properties that they have. They are both, oops, they are both hard. So I would circle hard and hard, but they have different colors, so I wouldn't circle the colors, and they have different shining, so I wouldn't circle that. How can you sort or classify objects using properties? You can sort them according to things like color, shape, size, whether they're bendy, bendable, and so on. And then how would you sort or classify objects without seeing them? If you couldn't look at the water bottle or the pencil, how would you know that they were both hard, for example? You could use your hands. To feel them. Um, if you were checking smell, you wouldn't use you wouldn't use your hands or your eyes. You would just use your nose to smell the properties. And now let's move on to page thirteen. You can use touch to describe matter. Without looking into a paper bag, you will describe the matter inside. How will you describe matter without seeing it? Without seeing matter, you could use your hands to feel it. So you could feel if it is soft, if it is furry, if it is hard, if it's bumpy. Use the bag provided by your teacher or parent Reach your hand inside the bag and feel the object. How do you describe what it feels like? So this is an example that you can do by yourself or with a friend or with your parent. All right, so we're back to the same chapter, but now we're moving on to solids. Is it a solid? So remember the definition or the meaning of a solid is something that is usually hard, but it has its own shape. So the shape does not change has a fixed shape. So what are some things that are solids? A rock? Yes, because a rock has a fixed shape. It doesn't change according to where it is. If you put it in a small room, if you put it in a big room, if you put it on top of something or under, it's always the same shape. Water? Water is a liquid, right? It is not a solid because it doesn't have a fixed shape. If you put it in this glass, it will have this shape. If you put it on the floor, it will have a flat shape like the floor. If you put it in a smaller cup, it will have a smaller shape. What about rubber? Yes, rubber, rubber is a solid because it has a fixed shape. A wool hat? Yes, it has a fixed shape as well. Even if you close it up, it will open up again. It doesn't change its shape according to where it is. Ice? 
As long as ice is hard and it hasn't melted, it is a solid because it has a fixed shape. These shapes are cubes. A feather is also a solid. Paper is also a solid. Juice is not a solid because it can have this shape like the glass or it can have this shape like the carton. So it changes its shape according to where it is. Sand is solid because it's a tricky one. Although it, it does have a fixed shape, it can change its shape according to where it is. But each granule itself, each tiny little piece of sand, is a solid. A cotton ball is a shape as well. It does have its own shape, so it is a solid. The air inside a balloon is not a solid because it changes. If it's in the balloon, it's in this shape. If we pop the balloon and the air comes out, it spreads out, so it's a completely different shape. So it doesn't have a fixed shape, therefore it is not a solid. Nail is also a solid. So we know that anything that has a fixed shape and doesn't change Some matter is hard to describe. Look at the picture of the oobleck. What questions do you have? So an oobleck is a mixture of cornstarch and water. And so it's kind of like slime. So slime is something between a solid and a liquid. Um, Maybe depending on how liquidy it is, it could be considered a liquid or it could be considered a solid. It does change its shape according to where it is. So if you put it in a container, if you put slime in a container, it's the same shape of the container. If you put it on the floor like this, it takes up a different shape. So it changes shape. So it could be considered a liquid. Here's another activity you can try. Remember, an oobleck is something like slime. So you can make a slime with water and cornstarch by mixing it in a bowl with a spoon and make some predictions. Do you think the oobleck is a solid? So have fun with it. Start with some water in a bowl and add the cornstarch slowly, if, if your mom and dad say it's okay, a little bit at a time. Stir the mixture well until it becomes gooey. And then you can squeeze it, you can make a puddle and quickly drag your fingers through it, roll it into a ball scoop it into your hand, and try to answer some of these questions. How is it like a solid? How is slime like a solid? And then what properties of oobleck or slime make it hard to classify? So why is it hard to describe slime as either a liquid or a solid? Differences in types of solids. Solid materials that are human made are synthetic or artificial. These solids do not exist in nature. Although they are artificial, they can be made to seem like something natural. For example, a synthetic cloth can be made to look like leather. In contrast, natural solids come from plants, animals, and rocks. Objects can be made from natural solids. Synthetic cloth on this sofa is made to look like leather. Objects can be made from solids created by people. Nylon cloth is a solid that is made by people. Patterns in the natural world. A pattern is a color, shape, surface, or a line, stripe, or spot that repeats regularly. Patterns in nature are beautiful, but they also give information. Seashells can be recognized and sorted by their color, shape, spiral, and rough or smooth surface. Tree rings also have a pattern. The number of rings tells us the tree's age. The rings are thicker or thinner based on the temperature and weather those years. Patterns are found in leaves, feathers, and features of other solids and forms of matter. Properties can be used to classify shells. The pattern of tree rings tells about events in nature. The pattern of spider's web tells what kind of spider made it. Patterns can be observed throughout nature.
patterns made by people. People create patterns when making things to use. Often, these patterns are not needed for the object's use. But patterns appeal to the senses of sight and touch. Sometimes, these patterns copy patterns found in nature. People use patterns from nature for baskets, tiles, and clothes. Blankets might have shapes of leaves on them and be made to feel like wool. Towels might have spirals like seashells on them. Colors and lines found in nature are popular for baskets, clothes, tiles, and buildings. Throughout the world, people use natural patterns to make their environment an interesting place to live. People make buildings with interesting patterns. Let's go through solids a little more. What is a solid? Properties of solids. Solids have many different properties, so that means they have many different descriptions. We can describe their color, we can describe their taste, their smell, their feel. Some are smooth, some are bendable, some float in water while others sink. So you know the words float and sink. Float means it rises on the water and sink means it falls to the bottom of the water. All solids have definite shapes, so they have a fixed shape, a shape that does not change. Solids can be made of different material. They can be made of wood, metal, or plastic. Some solids are hard and some are soft. A solid is a state of matter that has its own, that has a shape of its own. Sponge. So here are some properties of a sponge. Properties, descriptions, are soft, yellow, rough. Crystal. Crystals are hard, pointy, and breakable. Apples are red, smooth, and breakable. A ball is red, bumpy, rubber. You can also say bouncy. How do we measure solids? We use tools to measure solids. A ruler measures length or how long something is. It can tell us how long, wide, or high a solid is. Rulers measure in units. Some rulers measure in centimeters. Other me others measure in inches. Many rulers show both measurements. A balance shows how much mass an object has. You can measure an object by comparing it to different things. So mass is sort of like how heavy something is. So here you can measure the mass of crayons. You can compare the mass of pencils to sidewalk chalks. So they're almost the same over here because the balance looks equal. Remember we went over the word pattern. So let's try to match each of these words with their definition. Property is the look, feel, and smell sound or taste of a thing. So this would be here. Pattern, we said, is the repeated way in which something happens. So if there's lots of lines or swirls or circles, that describes a pattern. And a solid is a state of matter that has a shape of its own. Now let's circle the matter that is a solid and put an X on the matter that is not. Is a desk a solid? Yes. Is coffee solid? No, because it changes its shape. Cracker? Yes. Umbrella? Yes. Juice? No, because it changes its shape according to its container. And air? No, because it has no shape. What do you call materials made by people? So solid materials that are human made are synthetic or artificial. So they are synthetic or artificial. Name two solids that are found in nature. We could say rock, or we could say wood. Patterns. The pattern of a spider web can tell what kind of spider it is. What can other patterns in nature tell us? Do you remember any other one? We said trees. The rings of a tree tells us its age and how its weather condition was. We will plan and conduct an investigation about whether an object is a solid. So, 
write a question that you would like to answer in the investigation. Look around the room and choose objects to test. Fill in the action part of the table on the next page to show what you would do to determine if each object is a solid. Use the table to record the name and properties of each object you have chosen. So you could pick an object like a pencil, describe its properties. Is it hard? Is it brown? Is it bendable? Is it breakable? Etc. And then the action, what would you do to determine that it was a solid? Would you hit it, strike it? Would you try to bend it? Drop it? Pinch it? And then what happens when you do that? Maybe it stays the same. And that's how you would determine that it is a solid. You do that with some other objects. So circle the objects that are a solid. Look at the objects you circled. How do you know they are solids? Explain your thinking. Remember, a solid is anything that has a fixed shape or that has its own, has its own shape. What patterns do you see in the solid objects you tested? Patterns can describe the lines. Are there lines on them? Are there circles? How would you describe the patterns you see? And we read what is a solid article on the properties of solids. So circle the words that describe properties. Properties can be described as color, smell. Is block one of them? No, we didn't come across block. If block doesn't describe the way a matter is. A block is an example of a matter. So we have, so any description words would be the property. So color, smell, taste, size, shape. Name some materials that solids can be made of. Solids can be made of wood, rubber, metal, wool, etc. To measure a solid's length, you can use a, do you remember? ruler and also measures the height or the width. To measure the mass of a solid, you use a balance. You can also call it a scale. Measuring solids. You will learn how to measure two different solids. So we're going to take a crayon, for example, a book, a ruler, and a balance. So we're going to be measuring a crayon and a book. If you have free time, it's fun. It's something you can do on your own time with a ruler. So you put the ruler against the crayon, you put the ruler against a book. And what type of question will your investigation help you answer? It'll help us find out the shape, the length, the width. We'll know all about the size of our materials. Using a ruler, measure the length of the book and a crayon, and be sure to line up each item carefully with the ruler's edge. So you have to start at zero on the ruler for both of these items, the book and the crayon. Record the measurements using, using a ruler, measure the width of the book and the crayon. It's the same thing, we do the length, we do the width, how wide it is, how long it is. And then we can use the balance to measure the mass. And you can put the results in here. You can answer some of these questions. It's a fun activity to do if you have the time and it'll help you also practice how to use rulers properly and a balance.